Welcome to the Companion Chapel Everyday Bible Study Podcast. My name is Mike, coming to you from the Great Lakes area of beautiful Ontario, Canada on this gorgeous, it is Saturday, July 9th, 2022, coming right up. It is the Book of Psalms, Chapter 96. Don't you dare miss it. We'll be covering conspiracy theory today. But first, please consider your part in the many-member body of Christ. Make this your church. This is your identity, biblical literacy. Whatever God-given talent you have, God expects you to use it in the many-member body of Christ. I want to thank the people for their donations because now we have electricity here. Well, we is just me, my little doggy, Lana Del Rey, my little Papi Lon. And we're looking forward to get running water, to getting running water, and some insulation and some other things. But we've been living like this for years, but it's been a great time of study and this is your call to action to get involved in this church community today, the Companion Chapel, homesteading community. Go to companionchapel.com or email me at companionchapel at gmail.com. And remember, if you're listening by podcast, I'm now recording these so you can watch me on YouTube if that's more convenient for you. Now, please turn with me in your Bibles to Psalms chapter 96. This is awesome. Okay. First one. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Stop there. What do you mean a new song? As when you gain a working knowledge of the Bible, you can sing a new song. And just go back to the last chapter and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. That means song of praises. And remember chapter 47 of the book of Psalms, verse 7. You sing with understanding. That's what being new is. You get a new understanding in your heart. You mature as a Christian. And that's what God expects from you. Sing a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. That's all the inhabitants of the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. That means praise his name. All reverence belongeth to the Father. That's just one of his sacred seven spirits listed in the book of Isaiah. The spirit of reverence. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Show forth, Lord Jesus, show forth your thanks and praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered beyond our comprehension for you. And because of you, for me and because of me, because we fell and he had to set up a place of peace beyond our present comprehension that will not accommodate evil. And for him to do that, he had to come down here and walk it and talk it to make it valid and legit. And he did just that. He took the lowest earthly position for us. He was innocent, not guilty. He would not compromise with evil. He would not negotiate with evil. He would not make concessions with evil. And he had... The legitimate right to say, Satan, you got nothing on me. And when his blood dropped, the covenant was set universally that his kingdom is valid and it's waiting for you. Sing praises, show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all the people. Now don't forget the whole slap in the face deal Christ told us about in Matthew chapter 5. Now it's unfortunate that people don't study properly or they listen to some guy with a backwards collar wearing a dress i'll tell you what the slap in the face deal is when you turn one cheek and then turn the other cheek what was jesus christ doing he was teaching his disciples before he called them apostles before he sent them out these are instructions when you're sent out there to declare his glory among the heathens this written word among the heathen people if they don't want to hear it and one slaps you in the face, you deserve another slap. But if you're standing there having a Pepsi and a smoke and someone comes and slaps you in the face, it's like, yeah, it's go time. Don't you think otherwise? We're not second-class citizens. Okay, verse 4. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. All reverence belongeth the Father and is to be revered above all gods. What's all gods? Gods means your religion. What you worship. Worship is a verb that goes with religion. What you, your set of beliefs. You want to have another God? Go for it. Knock yourself out. God will not violate the principles of free will. But you cannot violate the principles of the one and only true God without consequence. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Whatever heathen people want to idolize, which is always based on money and the emptiness of the material world. But the Lord made the heavens. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created a self-sustaining planet of perpetual life in spectacular order and beauty. In the beginning, wisdom was there. 
before the first atom was formed on the highest part of the dust of the earth, we've been talking about that. When the whole universe was a pulverized dust, a consciousness became. That's what God's trying to tell us. It's the Holy Spirit. It's something He possesses. When we look up into the sky at night, or in the day, it's a nice blue sky today, you can't see very far, but at night, quantum physics has determined the universe is not matter, it's energy. You guys are brilliant. I could never have figured that one out. Thank you. But now we know that that energy influences the physical world. They want to call that energy the field. We call that energy the Holy Spirit. And we knew that thousands of years before these geniuses uh, came up with that theory. Thank you very much. And it's not a theory. It's true. So think about that. God made the heavens. The heavens means the aloft. Six, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. I love this word beauty. When we get to this word beauty in the manuscripts, Zechariah chapter 11, 7, God, call, God calls beauty and bands two staves, which means two staffs or ruling rods in which God possesses as he cohabitates with his children in the circuits of time that we read about in Psalms 19, that we just read about in Psalms 90, 91, 92, 93. Beauty is grace. Bands is union. You want to join that union. Union local, 1,000, divine completeness in his illustrious glory. Amen. Give strength or give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. What do you bring? Your unadulterated love. You bring your service. What can I give? What can I do? How can I magnify, glorify, and broadcast God's saving word? What's my spot in the many-membered body? How do I participate? Step one, your call to action is do something. Get involved in a ministry that's teaching the Bible. You know, where are you going to find these ministries? In the churches? No, you're going to find them in the wilderness. As it's written, Moses was in the wilderness. Jesus Christ said, where, is it, where do you expect to find the greatest prophet of all time? In the wilderness, not wearing effeminate clothing, standing behind a, a pulpit. They don't teach the Bible. Churchy churches do not teach the Bible. Okay, you have to find a church, a person that's a remnant of truth, like myself. I'll teach the Bible from out here, from 77 acres of land out in the wilderness, all by myself. Come on out, be part of it. Okay, whatever, you know, God wants your unadulterated love. That's what he wants. That's your offering. And you have to act on that. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Revere before him all the earth. Remember fear and revere is yara in the Hebrew. And it means the same thing. If you, if you fear something, like why would you fear God if you're doing everything you possibly can, if your heart's in the right place? You, you fear your father, even your earthly father, if you've, if you've been bad. You revere you look up to him, you pay homage to him, you love him to pieces if you've been good, of course. You don't fear, so put the word revere there. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Hosanna. Bring it on, God. What are we talking about here? The heathen. Okay, so we have the heathen. Declare it among the heathen and say among the heathen. So, the Bible teaches this over and over and over to know your enemy. And the Bible teaches us to love your enemy. That just means in Matthew chapter 5, when uh, Jesus Christ said, uh, we, you know, we pray for our enemy and we, we pray for them because they're walking in darkness. We mourn for our enemy, it says in the Beatitudes. But we have to think about our enemy now. They, they have a legitimate, valid set of plans, plots, and purposes. The enemy of God, of humanity, they have a workable argument that incorporates a total absence of humanity. The Bible teaches exhaustively to know your enemy. In verses 3 and 10 here, Declare among the heathen, say among the heathen. Heathen people regard human authorities as the truth. And that's the first seal vial in Trump. Do not be deceived. They don't regard the truth as the authority. 
the structure of the heathen's argument always fails because it is based on human imagination, human merit, human endeavor, human experience, theories, hypotheses, human entitlement. Human arguments or heathen arguments against God are always predictable. And in all cases, their line of progression during any philosophical, philosophical debate contradicts itself. Only God gives us a linear progression towards the truth. And the truth is a great separating force between right and wrong, good and evil, and heaven and hell. Now, they lose all their credibility, the heathen people, lose all their credibility when they use the phrase conspiracy theory. The conversation is over as soon as you hear that catchphrase. That's how you can immediately spot someone of limited intelligence. They don't understand the science. They don't understand the argument. So it is not possible for them to engage in any philosophical conversation at any level. So to appease their egotism, they drop the catchphrase conspiracy theory in attempt to discredit the person they are speaking to. You guys are missing out on a good argument from the billionaires of planet Earth and how they've stretched it out over the Earth, what their plans are. It's valid. It's interesting. Get to know it, but it's a total absence of humanity. So these people that it's no use having a conversation with, but they bury the truth in doubt, legal fees, and catchphrases. When someone says conspiracy theory to me, I just uh, look for an exit and I think I'll go home and talk to a bag of hammers because I'll, probably, I'll have a better conversation. At least it's two-way. It's very interesting to hear their side of the argument. Get to know it. Go back to 2005, 2012, 2014. Watch as these billionaires, what they've been devising and acting. It's workable. They're doing it right before our eyes. Get to know your enemy. Okay, Hosanna, come save us, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad that the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. This is after God comes back. This is after the seventh vial, seventh seal, seventh trump. Why? Why would trees rejoice, for example? I don't know. Maybe they can breathe again. Maybe we can get the atmosphere back again. This, this, um self-sustaining planet of perpetual life like that God created and then mankind's the exterminator God's the creator mankind's the exterminator and there's more it's just chapter 96 before the Lord stop there let's go back for interpretation here to um, Psalms 95 verse 2 let us come before his presence with thanksgiving that's how you come before the Lord before the Lord, with your thanksgiving, with your love, your unadulterated love, trust, respect. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. Of course he has to. That's the only way to get rid of evil. Okay? There has to be this side and that side, and the bad side is going to get extinguished so that we can get on with the eternity. The energy field, it's not a negative energy. It's not fighting. It's not chaotic. Because if it was, planet Earth would spin out of its orbit in a shot. God is it that controlled energy. That is the Holy Spirit. It's His divine authoritative power. It's beyond our current understanding of physics and beyond our current perception of physics. But you can see the results. He cometh to judge. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with His truth. That great separating force between right and wrong, good and evil, and heaven and hell. Isn't that so refreshing? Well, I want to thank you very much for listening, and thank you very much for watching, and if you can help me, if I've helped you, please help me keep bringing these to me, keep bringing these podcasts and broadcasts to you. Go to companionchapel.com, whatever you can help out with. That's the greatest thing. I don't want anything for myself. The emptiness of the material world means less than nothing to me. But to make a nicer studio, perhaps get some people to help. If you want to come help, whatever God-given talent you have, God expects you to use, to use it in the many-membered body of Christ. You want to co-host, you want to help with the audio, you want to help with the video, because I get all these videos lined up and then it takes me forever to try and get them on YouTube. I only know one thing. This is my God-given talent, is to, is to bring the Word to life for you. And I do that because I love you, and I can say that without even knowing you. The same way people can hate each other without even knowing them. 
I want you to have yourself the greatest day, and bye for now.